Car crash cases, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts. The attorneys with Josh Wright from the law firm of Hollis Wright and host David Lamb. Good evening and welcome into the attorneys. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for the next half hour. We have a topic of conversation really going to be interesting. And this topic tonight is one that does affect a great many people and a great deal of interest each and every time we talk about it. The ground rules, they're the same as they've been through more than 300 shows now. We would love for you to interact with us. Ways you can do that, you'll see there on your screen all throughout the program. Also, Hollis Wright makes available attorneys standing by live for a free off-air confidential conversation. So if during the course of the show, a question pops into your mind's opportunity right there to pick up the phone, give them a call and get your question answered tonight by an actual attorney. Leading our conversation tonight, he's the managing partner of Hollis Wright, Josh Wright. Josh, good to see you. Good to see you too, how you doing? I'm doing good and I feel like I should be like, have, maybe have a tux on or something because our digs, this, this looks good. You know, everybody needs a facelift uh, every once in a while, David. And, True. and this is our facelift. Yeah. After about 300 shows, it was finally time to do something different. Uh, shake up production a little bit and uh, shake up the set. And, uh, you know, there's so many people to thank for the hard work that's been put into the whole brand new set. There's some neat things we're going to be doing in 2019 um, with video displays and some other things. Um, uh, but just so many people to thank from WVTM for the work that they put in, the hard work that you put in, our staff, Melissa Beatty from Melissa's, our office yeah, and um, the rest of the lawyers that kind of brainstormed on the new set uh, and how this process would work and what 2019 would look like. Vazdar Production Company, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Expo Displays, well, they did uh, a great job who did this. a fabulous job yeah. with backlighting the set and creating the site in the graphics for so you know just a lot of people to thank and and the net of all this is our goal and focus is to try and keep the show fresh and unique and new and different as we move yeah. into 2019 yeah. and hopefully this will be a start uh, or a step at least in the right direction I, I believe that way looking for creative ways to continue to inform and educate the community so while maybe the set is different the look is different the mission is the same and that is educating and informing folks about legal matters. Well, you know, and not just that. Um, uh, it, it's to help people recognize that although we may have made some adjustments here, um, calls, texts, emails, Facebook, Twitter, all those things are being responded to. I mean, one of the things that we try and do our very best to do is to respond to every text, call, email, live, um, uh, during the show uh, and throughout the week. And so we have lawyers standing by right now that are available to answer legal related questions that may relate to this legal topic or others. And that's the pledge that we've always had and we will continue to have mm -hmm. because I think it's a good service. And I think people generally are a little intimidated to contact attorneys. Uh, and this should be a less imposing environment right. that allows them to ask legal related questions that they may have that they've always wondered the the answer to and uh, never had a format to, to ask it and now they've got that format. Now it's easy, making yep. it easy. Um, 300 something shows we've done. Yeah, it's yeah, a 350, bunch. 360, I guess something yeah, like that. We're, Think of the thousands of people you all have talked about. So it's yeah. been a, um, interesting and a whole lot of fun and look forward to the next chapter and the new look is kind of helping us move right on into the future. So yeah. how about we jump into tonight's show? Let's do it. All right, talking tonight about uh, uh, trucking companies, trucking accidents. Why do a show on this? Um, what's, what's kind of the impetus for you behind, behind this subject matter? So, you know, we have done many of these shows over the years, and we put different spins on them. Um, Birmingham, Alabama, the central Alabama area, um, is well known for a lot of different things. Um, one thing that we also have is a lot of interstates that all feed into one location in and around the central Alabama area, whether it's into Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston, or up to Gadsden, uh, up to Huntsville, down to Montgomery. Um, Birmingham is a bit of a hub that um, uh, there are a lot of interstates that feed in. A lot of these accidents and a lot of injuries associated with tractor trailer accidents happen in an interstate environment. Right. And so I think that makes this central Alabama area uh, susceptible, if you will, to uh, potential claims in this area. And so we get a lot of questions, a lot of calls and texts and emails weekly and monthly related to this topic. So mm -hmm. it's why we continue to do the show. Now, 
you know, we start this show, and, and I, love, I love the fact we have people that watch this show uh, that call in that have questions and, and comments. There are also people that call in that get frustrated sometimes, and sometimes it's people in the tractor trailer industry. So I want to start the show out and, and with a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is we're not here today to talk about tractor trailer drivers always doing it the wrong way. That's not our focus, not our goal. It is to educate the viewing uh, audience about potential issues associated with tractor trailer accidents. There are many tractor trailer drivers, commercial vehicle drivers out on the road doing it the right way, they are. following yeah. the regulations, following the rules, doing the things that they're supposed to to keep people safe. And there are a lot of automobiles that are causing these accidents. But we're going to be talking today about those folks that aren't doing it the right way. A yeah. um, couple quick statistics that are interesting about this area of the law, and it's why it's a popular area of the law. Number one, there are half a million of these accidents yearly domestically uh, in the United States. That's a lot of accidents. Uh, and two, uh, about one third of the accidents that involve commercial motor vehicles involve some form of distraction, whether it's phone, alcohol, drugs, fatigue, there's at least one third of these accidents that involve that. And so that's why this is kind of an explosive topic, but a topic that's important in this area. What laws govern the trucking companies and or uh, the, the, the driver's conduct themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, what's interesting about commercial motor vehicle cases, David, is that those that operate commercial motor vehicles, whether they are hauling freight, um, whether they are operating uh, a smaller commercial vehicle, uh, for their business, uh, whether they are uh, hauling individuals from location to location as a common carrier, uh, they all are subject to what I call heightened standards compared to what you and I see on a daily basis when we get in okay. our cars, right? We're subject to the Alabama rules of the road and operating our motor vehicle in a safe and prudent manner. Mm -hmm. uh, commercial motor vehicle uh, drivers are subject to a much higher standard. Uh, number one, they're subject to the FMCSA, which is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration rules and regulations. Okay. Uh, we can go through some of those today uh, and, and what that means. They're also subject to the same rules of the road that you and I are subject to when we operate our regular non-commercial vehicle. And then even the Public Service Commission in Alabama has certain rules for intrastate drivers, those that operate their vehicles within a hundred mile uh, radius uh, or just in the state of Alabama never leave and go interstate outside of Alabama. So um, they have heightened rules that apply. Let's talk about a couple of those because I think they're important to lay some context about this topic. All right. um, one, of the, one of the things associated with um, the uh, FMCSA is um, that they have an obligation to make sure uh, that they are operating within certain hours of service. Um, and they can only operate within those hours of service on a typical time, meaning they're not allowed to operate after they have uh, operated, for example, uh, for 11 hours in a 10-hour time frame. And I know we're getting ready to go out to break. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk about some of the heightened rules okay. that apply. Let's go to break because I know we're about to yeah. have to do that. Uh, but when we come back, I want to talk about some of those heightened rules and how they apply in a litigation context. Okay. Also, always enjoy getting your questions. Look forward to those as well. We'll pass those along to Josh as well. Stay tuned. We have more of the attorneys coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm. Thank you for watching The Attorneys. Now we hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple. Provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free, so if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury related topics, you can call, email, or text us. Or you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or simply contact us by going to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us link. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us watching The Attorneys. It's common for a potential client to ask, there are many great firms out there. What separates Hollis Wright from other law firms? My response is generally to talk about the strengths of our law firm in handling cases throughout Alabama and the United States. 
that we've recovered through verdicts and settlements, hundreds of millions of dollars for our clients, that we have financial resources to hire any required expert and to take their case all the way to trial, even if it costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars to do so, that we settle cases for top dollar before trial is needed because the insurance companies and defendants know we have the ability to take a case all the way to trial, that we handle cases only on a contingency fee, which means we never ask the client to pay any cost of litigation whatsoever and only recover those costs and a fee if we win for the client, that we have a staff of more than 20 employees that help us litigate cases from start to finish, that we've had a television show on NBC 13 for six years that answers thousands of questions to citizens for free each year. But what I've learned in the last 20 years as a trial lawyer is that clients want more and deserve more than all those things. Those things are expected of each law firm they consider. So with that wisdom, what I tell clients now is simply this. We are a family-oriented practice at Hollis Wright, just like their own family. That we are a team-oriented group that engages in team-building exercises and team-building events because it helps our clients win cases that we are dads and moms and brothers and sisters, that we are former Alabama trial lawyer presidents, that we return every single telephone call from every single client, that our bedside manner is second to none. So what really separates our firm from others? We're balanced and well-rounded and as such, we relate to people not just as lawyers, but as compassionate human beings. Human beings that know what it's like to face a day in court. We are advocates. We are compassionate. We are tireless. We are, simply put, Hollis Wright. Welcome back into the attorneys eastbound and down 18 wheels and rolling, right? That's, That's how it. the song goes. Talking all about truckers, trucking companies, and the rules of the road for them, as well as us, those folks who don't drive those big rigs. Welcome back into the show. Hey, remember, attorneys from Hollis Wright standing by live to speak with you. A great opportunity. Could be about this topic or uh, maybe another question that pops into your mind, but they'd love to speak with you again all throughout the show. Now, where we left off, talking yep. about the, the heightened rules and regulations, I guess due to the size and the complexities of operating a big rig, kind of the, the rules are a little different for them versus um, those of us who just drive uh, regular vehicles, I well, guess. Well, that's right. I mean, the federal um, uh, entity that we talked about, the FMCSA, mm -hmm. has promulgated a set of rules many years ago um, that have been adjusted over the years to try and make sure that those that are operating commercial motor vehicles are safe on the road. Let me give you a couple examples. Okay. Um, did you know that commercial drivers, uh, generally, most commercial drivers, have an obligation and responsibility to keep a logbook? Okay. You and I don't have to we keep a logbook, we yeah. operate. They keep a logbook to make sure that when they're on the road, they're within their, quote, hours of service. Okay. You can only drive a certain number of hours uh, as a commercial driver on the road so that fatigue does not weigh into the operation of that motor vehicle. Let me give you a couple um, just uh, rules that, that apply related to fatigue and the amount of hours that you can operate. Uh, you can only operate uh, in a typical day, uh, a commercial vehicle, 11 hours, after you've had 10 hours of rest if you have worked 14 hours during a day, you cannot operate a commercial vehicle after 14 hours, no matter what. So for example, if you drove for 10 uh, and you worked for four uh, uh, on a dock somewhere, for example, or ran a forklift, uh, you can't operate a commercial vehicle thereafter. So there are log books that are used by police officers um, and evaluated to make sure that folks are operating within their hours of service uh, and that they're not being fatigued. Uh, another thing that a lot of people don't recognize why commercial vehicles are subject and drivers subject to kind of a heightened standard. Uh, did you know that they have to have physical 
uh, evaluations, and they have to have medical evaluations uh, um, uh, each year or every two years based on their medical condition. And the reason for that is we want people that are healthier operating commercial vehicles. If you're susceptible to a heart attack, a stroke, high blood pressure, those things can all weigh in whether or not you have an opportunity to operate a commercial vehicle on our road. Uh, if you're involved in an accident, uh, immediate after the accident, uh, you're responsible for being drug tested. There are also random drug tests that may happen uh, for a commercial vehicle uh, under the FMCSA uh, to make sure that those individuals that are operating those vehicles on the road are safer. So when I say heightened, yeah, the are. intent and desire of the FMCSA for all the commercial drivers out there that are watching the show right now is to make sure that they are operating within the rules, but also that they are even safer than you and I on the road. And that's one of the nice things that I know and that I'm reassured on when I operate my vehicle on the interstates and the roads in Alabama is that I got commercial drivers that are subject to a heightened standard. Now, David, with each group, right, there are going to be some bad eggs out there. And right. a lot of times those are the ones that ultimately end up in litigation. Um, and it's because somebody didn't follow the rules. Somebody was uh, operating outside their hours of service. Somebody was operating while they were distracted. Somebody was operating uh, in a circumstance where they had not done appropriate uh, physical examinations and they had a stroke or a heart attack mm -hmm. uh, while on the road. So there are a lot of circumstances where we're in litigation, but uh, it's it's reassuring at least to it know is. that there are such heightened standards yeah. out there. It makes you feel a little safer. No question, um, no question. Those are some big rigs. Uh, question we've got here, how long do I have to file a lawsuit if I'm hurt in a trucking accident? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question too. Um, you know, the general rule is two years, uh, similar to uh, kind of a negligent standard in Alabama uh, or a wantonness standard where you generally have two years to file a lawsuit. Um, uh, but I would not wait for two years. My recommendation would be if somebody is involved in an accident involving a commercial motor vehicle, getting someone involved, whether it's our firm or someone else's firm, getting someone involved immediately is super, super important to make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed early on. And we can talk about that just a little bit. Um, you know, many of these commercial outfits have crews that are on the ground the day of, within hours of an accident, to do a full and complete investigation, uh, to download black box data from the commercial vehicle, because a lot of these vehicles have that, um, to uh, do an accident reconstruction um, there, to take pictures, to talk with officers and get the officer statements, get witness statements, those things. Those are all things a lot of these commercial outfits are doing the day of the accident. So if you've been involved in a commercial motor vehicle related accident, you want to get a lawyer involved immediately that can do the same things for you at no cost through a contingency fee arrangement. Most mm -hmm. cases are handled on contingency well, fee. What about insurance? Yeah. Is that optional for trucking companies? Are there rules about that? Yeah, so it's not optional for me and you. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there's still 25% of the people on the roads operating regular vehicles that don't comply with the law. Goodness. Okay, Now, there are penalties for that. Yeah. They can lose their license or some bad things. But even you and I are, have to have insurance, right, as we operate our regular vehicle. Commercial drivers don't have that, that option. They don't have an option to operate without a license. They're checked randomly. Uh, they're checked at way stations. Uh, they have to submit certain things to the, the DOT. Uh, at the end of the day, um, a commercial vehicle accident is going to have insurance, uh, almost 100%. There's only, I think, one time in my practice I've seen where a commercial motor vehicle accident did not have some form of insurance. Now, they have a tiered insurance um, process, too. They have to have a minimum of $750,000 of insurance. Okay. okay? Uh, a lot of these commercial outfits have a million dollars in coverage. And depending on what they're hauling, whether it's hazardous material, product, or even individuals, like a common carrier, like a bus, you know, we've got a, a bus case right now that involves about 46 people over in Mississippi. When you're hauling those types of individuals, you may have to have upwards of $5 million in coverage. Another reason why you want to get a lawyer involved early to figure out what coverages are applicable and, in fact, what coverage you may have in your household that could still be applicable to you even though the commercial entity has its own coverage. Uh, another question we've got here is the trucking company responsible for the actions of its drivers. Yeah, so the way that generally works is this. As long as the uh, operator of the commercial vehicle, David, was working within the line and scope of their authority as an employee of that um, commercial 
uh, uh, entity. Mm -hmm. um, the commercial entity is going to be responsible for the actions of that individual. And I know we're getting ready to go to break. When we come back, I want to talk just a little bit about a different setup where there are some uh, individuals that operate as owner operators that are not company drivers, that. and that can impact whether or not the company or the entity they're calling for is responsible. All right, we are going to head to break as we do so. A couple of reminders Hollis Wright does a great job on social media of informing and educating you. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just search the term Hollis Wright, you'll find them. There really is some helpful information and some things you need to know in a great, convenient way for you to kind of keep up uh, with what the firm, what's going on at the firm, and maybe even educate you on some of the things you just may not know about the law. Stay tuned. More of the attorneys coming right up. I'm attorney Tyler Vale with the law firm of Hollis Wright. Many people ask the same question, why should I hire a lawyer? While there may be some legal situations that do not require you to hire a lawyer, the clear majority of legal problems would certainly benefit from having competent counsel involved. To begin with, the law is complicated. Even experienced lawyers typically do not represent themselves in court. A solid case with clear liability can quickly unravel without the help of a trained attorney. Lawyers understand the rules of evidence and know how to properly lay a foundation to get critical evidence and testimony admitted into court. Lawyers are trained to recognize legal problems early on in a case and can help avoid pitfalls that unrepresented individuals may fall into. Lawyers can also increase the value of a case by getting experts involved to help prove additional damages that an unrepresented person may not realize they are entitled to. An experienced lawyer has probably worked on cases like yours and can give insight to negotiating a fair settlement based on recent jury verdicts and settlements that unrepresented individuals may not have access to. Another important reason to hire an attorney is because the person or business you sue will likely have legal representation themselves. Non-attorneys are generally at a disadvantage when squaring off against opposing counsel or doing business with another party that has legal counsel. The law is complicated and an attorney who is representing your adversary may try to take advantage of it. Our law firm offers free case consultations that allow you to meet with us for free during a face-to-face -face meeting where we can discuss the type of case you have, the potential value of your case, and your likelihood of success. This initial meeting can help you decide whether you need to hire a lawyer. Please remember your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. Remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and promise to you. Thanks for watching the attorneys on WVTM 13. Welcome back into the attorneys. Our final segment, about five minutes remaining. If you want to speak with those attorneys standing by live, pick up the phone, give them a call now. Josh, when we were, went to yep. break, we were talking about these uh, folks who kind of, uh, the individual owner operators yep. um, of, of those uh, trucks. Help us understand how that works. Yes, yeah, so owner operators, it's a, a unique area of uh, the commercial uh, world. And it, it is individuals who are a little more entrepreneurial, don't want to be company drivers, don't want to operate just for a company, and want to be able to haul for multiple entities and kind of run their own business, if you will. So a lot of times they'll become what's called owner operators. What makes owner operators unique from company drivers is owner operators may not be in the line and scope of their authority operating for the company that they're hauling freight for, right? Okay. So uh, if they're hauling freight for Johnson Company out of Paducah, Kentucky, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that they are an agent of Johnson Company. Now, getting a lawyer involved helps flush through those issues. Just because they're an owner-operator, just because they may not be in the line of scope, does not mean they don't have responsibility, does not mean they don't still have insurance. Um, so. Uh, a lawyer needs to get involved to assess whether or not they're a company driver, whether they're an owner-operator, what coverages are applicable. And in circumstances where someone's an owner-operator, 
right, and they're not operating as a company driver, mm -hmm. there may be multiple layers of coverage applicable. And I've run into that fairly recently in some cases where um, there's multiple insurances involved for the freight company and for the owner operator. So sometimes it's to the advantage of the victim uh, to have an owner operator involved. Uh, but you want to get a lawyer to flush those things out. Yeah, and you want to get a lawyer to do that pretty quick, probably. Yeah. This is com a, a complex matter and a complex area of the law. You, you need some help. Well, I, I think that's right. It's not an area of the law where you can go it alone. Like you're, you know, If you try and go it alone, you're going to get contacted by a representative from the insurance company for the tractor trailer company, and they're going to want to take your statement right away. And although they're going to appear as if they're trying to help you, the reality is they're chipping away at the responsibility to make sure that the responsibility is on the non-commercial vehicle, not the commercial vehicle. Right. You want a lawyer involved early, and David, we, we talk a lot about contingency fee arrangements, and the sim simplest way to describe that, and that's how we operate, is through a contingency fee arrangement. The simplest way to explain that is, is, is really this, that the individual who's been injured pays zero, never is asked to come out of pocket ever. And the lawyer manages the case, funds the case, uh, and, and processes the case. And if there is a result, the lawyer gets those expenses back plus a fee. So we operate everything on a contingency fee arrangement. The nice thing about that is you get the same level of care. You get the same level of legal help through a contingency fee lawyer as you would if you were for the trucking company, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to have a contingency fee lawyer involved early and quick in order to have people on the ground, have experts on the ground, talk with officers, take statements, get black box downloaded. All those things are necessary to work a case up to make sure that you're on an equal playing field from what the commercial company has already done to try and put together um, what happened in that accident and reconstruct that accident, so to speak. Yeah. Um, we've got about a minute and a half remaining in the show. Um, uh, so, um, you know, let, let's kind of land at where we began. A yeah. As you've seen, folks have seen by the show, the show's going to remain the same. Yep. Um, it, just our look is a little bit different. Well, that's right. And, you know, we're going to do some really neat things in 2019 um, uh, in addition to just a new set uh, on the show. We want to make the show a little bit more interactive. We want to mm -hmm. make the show uh, fresher. Uh, and we want to put uh, kind of a, a, di a different brand on it. And it's not that our firm has changed. It's not that the focus of answering calls, emails, texts has changed. It's just that we recognize that having a new face every once in a while to show that we're here, we're fresh, we're hip, we're ready to go, and we're ready to help people uh, is the key to this whole thing. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's really a passion of yours, isn't it? Making it accessible and, and great legal advice accessible. You know, th there's something called pro bono work, and pro bono work is work that lawyers do for free to help other individuals. Right. This show has always been about pro bono work. It's been about answering questions for free in a non-intimidating environment to allow people to be able to get legal help they need when they really need it. Yeah. Well, we uh, enjoy the conversation today. Look Good forward to, to the new look. Let's uh, do it together. Let, let's keep on going. 300 more shows to go. We're wrapping up here. Um, the way you can still get in touch with Hollis Wright, that information is on your screen. We appreciate your time as always. Thanks so much. We'll look for you next time right here on The Attorneys. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.